Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install OpenWRT on a single network port device. And for this tutorial, we will be using the Raspberry Pi version 4B. Alright, because we have only a single network port, so we need to create two different VLAN and one for the one VLAN and one for the LAN VLAN. In order to create VLAN, we need a switch that support VLAN and we have the TL-HG108E which is a smart switch from TB-Link and this switch support VLAN or else you can choose any of the switches out there maybe the Pro switch from D-Link or the many switch from Cisco or uh, Microtex or whatsoever let's take a look at the network diagram so this is the ISP routers or the modem and it is running DHCP server on VLAN 10 Right, so this router will be connected to the switch on port number one and on port number two we will be connecting to our Raspberry Pi 4 and the rest of the ports, port 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 will be used for our LAN device Right, so let's get into it let's navigate to open the RT table of hardware and get the firmware Right let's just google.com size open to be rt.org raspberry pi 4 right so we are right here p4b okay so if you scroll down you will have this firmware open to the rt snapshot installed url and you need to just download this firmware okay if you are using the snapshot version, Lucy will not include it by default. So you need to either use the attached connection to manage the router or you need to use uh, display and then connect it to the Raspberry Pi 4. The image has been successfully downloaded and let me just burn the image to the SD card. There are different ways you can burn the firmware to the SD card. If you are using Linux, you can use the famous DD command or if you are using Windows, you can try rule first. Let's plug in the SD card, right? select the firmware and this is our firmware, it is uh, schwarzfactory.img So let's click start, OK, OK It will take some time, depends on the speed of your SD card and to have a smooth open the RT running on the Raspberry Pi 4, I would suggest using any of the SD card that had the class beyond Cloud 10. So either Cloud 10 or UHS 1 or 2, something like that. The firmware has been successfully written to the SD card and let's just insert it to the Raspberry Pi 4 and after that we are connecting everything together the cable from the ISP to the switch port number one and then the Raspberry Pi connected to the second port of the switch and our PC connected to any of the rest of the ports and let's just do this So the Raspberry Pi is booting up and by default we should receive an IP address from the DHCP server of the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's have a check right here and rate. We have an IP address of 192.168.1.1. Let's try to ping the routers. Ping 192.168.1.1. Alright, good. That's good. And please bear in mind that we cannot manage the router with Lucy because this is the snapshot version. 
So we need to use either SSH connections or the monitor and I prefer SSH connection because it's simple. Let's establish an SSH connection. So root at 192.168.1.1 and then yes. All right. Guys, so we are inside OpenWRT on the Raspberry Pi 4 and let's give it a password first. It's always. Okay, so if you take a look at the IF config, you have only one Ethernet zeros and it is currently our LAN interface, right? So right now the switch is connected to the Raspberry Pi 4 as well and by right we should have a management IP address of the switch. And how do we know that? Well, you can get the management IP from the DHCP list and in order to do that, we will cat tmp slash dhcp dot leases, right? Nothing? Well, they're nothing. This is not right. Let me just do a reboot and see how. I believe the router should be up and running right now, so let's establish the SSH connection one more time. Okay, so cat tmp dscp dot leases. All right, so right here we have two leases. One is the list for our computer, which is 192.168.1.1, and this one is the leases for the TLH310AE. Okay, so let's just open that on the browsers. Okay, so let's just log in as our normal procedure. And then let's navigate to the VLAN section, A02.1Q VLAN, and then enable it first. Okay. Right, so we are going to create the first VLAN. It's a VLAN for one connection. So the VLAN ID is 10. If you take a look at this network diagram, right, so the one we have the VLAN 10. So VLAN 10, the VLAN name will be one or something like that. And then port number one and two will be tagged and the rest of the ports is not a member. Click add or modify. Right, so if you do it correctly, you will have the tagged port one, two and VLAN 10. And now we are modified in VLAN one, which is the default VLAN, or you can put it default or maybe LAN for example. And then port number one is not a member. And the rest of the ports are untagged just like this and then go to the pvid setting and then takes on port number one and set it vlan id 10 and that's it that's very simple basically we should have a working vlan right now on my switch the tlhg10ae it should be working when the port number one this port number one on the tag is status however for some other router all the TP-Link module and D-Link module, you need to set the port number one to untag it, VLAN 10, right? So if you have some problem, you can just go back to the switch and yeah, set this port number one to untag it for the one connection. Okay, so we done creating the VLAN on the switch and now let's create in the one interface with VLAN 10 on our routers, on the OpenWRT. Okay, so I app config. There are different ways to create an interface. You can either use the UCI command or you can directly edit the network configuration file and I refer the second way because it is faster. Okay, so let's edit it. V, start for Vim. These are the text editors and then etc slash config slash network. All right, so you are inside the editors and you are on the viewing mode. So let's switch to the insert mode by press the I key and then navigate to this section and then add in a new section config interface and then one. Okay, and then tab option um, IF name equal to ETH. If you take a look at the LAN interface, it is ETH0, right? So on our interface, we will be creating from the same port. So it will be ETH0, 
However, we are adding VLAN 10 for the one connection, right? So it should be dot 10 and just like that. And then option proto and then DHCP. And basically that's all. After you're done, press the EXC key again to exit the editor mode and change to the normal, the view mode. And then press the semicolon W, Q, W, right, Q, quick, right? Hit enter and then serve it. Network restart. Okay, look right. So let's run the IF config one more time and see. Right, so as you can see right here, we have our interface ETS 0.10, which is the VLAN 10 on one connection up and running, and it receives an IP address from the ISP routers and it has an IP address of 192.168.10.253 and now we should have a working internet connection right so let's do a test ping 1.1.1.1 alright good we have the response from the internet that's fine we don't have Lucy okay so we need to install Lucy so OPKG update to update the package database Okay, and it will take some time, depends on the speed of your internet connection. And then, OPKG install Lucy. It is downloading and installing a lot of packets. Alright, and we're done. So, let's open 192.168.1.1, our famous. GUI and then log in. Right, whatever. Okay, guys, so we're inside open the RT, Raspberry Pi 4, Model B, and we have 2 gigabytes of RAM. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot, right? And with 4 core CPU, you should be able to run everything smoothly for sure. Okay, let's go to network interfaces and have a look. We have our LAN interface on VLAN 1 and which is the default VLAN and our one interface on VLAN 10. Let's run a speed test and see how this do. And before we proceed, let me install the edge top packet so that we can view the CPU's process when we are running the speed test. Right, so edge top. Okay, look good and open our speed test application put it right here let's run it alright so we see that I'm using the 4G connection so the speed is not really good but we can see that with this speed then there is actually no lot at the CPU of the Raspberry Pi anyway so it is really good thing and I believe that this Raspberry Pi 4 should be the powerful router to work with. That's just the basic thing about uh, setting up a single network port on OpenWRTs and with the Raspberry Pi 4. And besides setting up at a router, a normal router, you can still configure the wireless. For example, you can go to here, we have the wireless section. The Raspberry Pi 4 has only one radio, so you need to select either BGN or AC depends on your need and right now it is disabled by default and I also don't need to turn it on Alright, so that's all about the tutorials on how to install the OpenLibre RT on the Raspberry Pi 4 Beside this, you can look at my other tutorial on the channel for how to install OpenLibre RT on your old computer with one network port or two network port and all the loss balancing or something like that, right? And I have also created a group uh, for you guys. So if you have any question, you can still uh, communicate and discuss inside that forum. So I will also put it in the link in the video description. And that's it. Thanks so much for your time. If you have any questions or idea, feel free to leave it in the comment section. And share, subscribe, and support the channel. Thank you and see you again. Bye-bye.